Hey y'all, happy Saturday. It is breezy here on the creek. Breezy, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. I wanted to start out today with the devotion for August 29th. 2020. Desire God's heart. Arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose. Patiently to suffer rather than to fail to please God. For whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ, is done with intentional sin, has stopped pleasing himself and the world, and pleases God, so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by his human appetites and desires. But he lives for what God wills. Rest for 1 Peter 4, 1 through 2. You have desires of the flesh, but you also have desires inspired by the Holy Spirit. You have a mind of the flesh, but you also have the mind of Christ. And hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of the heart. Learn to determine where your desires are coming from. Desires from your flesh don't bring peace, but desires from God's spirit brings joyful rewards. Exercise self-control and choose those desires that are planted in you by the Holy Spirit. I can definitely relate to that. Um, this whole time I've been trying to figure out exactly who I'm supposed to be and that person is not perfect. And I felt like by me doing this video blog that God has led me to do is going to really help me find my one true self and it's all because of Him, by Him. Reading the Bible, spending time with Him, praying, trusting, trusting. Trust is a huge issue for me because I've been hurt so much in the past. Um, but God says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. And that's Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It's hard not to be anxious because when you have an anxiety problem like I have, and I also suffer from bipolar disorder, and I have to take medicine every single day. And that has been a struggle for me because I got diagnosed in, when I was 16 years old. And for almost 16 years, I have been trying to manage it. And the one thing that I have learned, you gotta take your medicine. And not only do I have to get medicine from God's word, I've gotta take my medicine. So, I'm taking my medicine. Yes. God only knows what you've been through. That's the truth. But I want to read a little bit from Malachi. And when I first started this journey, I was like, who is Malachi? Like, I knew about Peter and John and Psalms and um, the Corinthians and Genesis and a little bit of Exodus. But Malachi, I was, I was not familiar with. So I'm going to read a little bit in case you haven't heard of them either. Um... And this is from Joyce Myers, Battlefield of the Mind Bible. If I had to briefly summarize the theme of the book of Malachi, I would say it is a religion versus relationship. While other books near the end of the Old Testament encourage the reconstruction of the temple in Jerusalem, Malachi writes after the temple has been rebuilt. Other prophets hoped the temple would give the Jews a place to worship, restoring honor for God among the people. Unfortunately, once the temple was complete, their worship was superficial and not from the heart. If it's not coming from your heart, don't waste your time or waste anybody else's time. Don't waste God's time either. Neither the priest nor the people worship with right attitudes or with actions based on sincere love for God. Woo, honey. Mere religion may give people a sense of satisfying some kind of spiritual requirement, but only genuine relationship with God brings true peace, joy, and fulfillment. Let me encourage you to prioritize your relationship with God over everything and everyone else. And that's hard to, for me because I feel like I love 
my children and God the same. Like, how I put God first. I'm learning to put God first in everything that I do. Through this journey, like, I've learned that. But, I mean, love is love. <laughs> and your love for God determines how you treat others. And also, the relationship versus religion. Anybody can have a religion. Anybody. But your relationship with that particular person determines how you really are. Like, you can go to church on Sunday, but if you're sitting there on your phone, or you're thinking about something other than what the preacher's talking about, there, I mean, that's not a relationship. You're not giving God the time that you really, truly need. And you don't have to go to church. I mean, it's nice to have a church. I mean, we, we've got a good church that we were going to before all this COVID started. But I found church right here on this porch, reading this Bible, praying with my family. I mean, the relationship with God is there, but I want it to grow stronger. And one way to be victorious in your faith is to allow the Lord to purify and refine your heart. And it says Malachi 3.3. 3. He will sit as a refiner and re purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, the priests and refine them like gold and silver so that they may pre re they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. <sighs> God, you are like a refiner's fire and are, and like launder's soap. Remove impurities and uncleanness from me. And um, we took a trip to Billy Graham's library. And let me take y'all with me. And they were giving out these cards, the salvation poem. And I'm gonna read it to y'all. Jesus, you died upon a cross and rose again to save the lost. Forgive me now of all my sins. Come be my Savior, Lord and friend. Change my life and make it new and help me, Lord, to live for you. And you can read that to yourself, y'all. And you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior of life. And let's read from Romans 5.8. But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us by the fact that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I want y'all to take a minute. Christ died for us. For us. That is the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate sign that God truly loves us. He sent his only son, his only son to die for us so we can be forgiven for our sins. But don't keep sinning. Don't keep saying in love. Show compassion. And just like we talked about yesterday, the fruits of the Spirit. Use those. Use them. God wants us to think and speak and behave rightly. And He gives us what we need in order to do so. God will never require us to do something without giving us what we need to do it. God gives us the gift of righteousness so we can become righteous in what we think, say, and do. Although we have sinned, our sins cannot be compared to the righteousness of God's free gift. Our sin is great, but his free gift of righteousness is greater. The fruit of your life cannot be any greater than who and what you believe you are. So it is vital to learn to think about and believe in your righteousness in Christ. If you constantly think about something is wrong with you, you will keep producing wrong words and actions. But believing that you are right with God will help you produce the right behavior. Let me read that again. If you constantly think that something is wrong with you, you will keep producing wrong words and actions. But believing that you are right with God, you will help you. God will help you produce right behavior. Happy thoughts, positive thoughts. When I start thinking about something negative, my daddy taught me to think of a color, a flower, and a name. So if I'm Thinking of something crazy, I would start thinking about 
yellow, sunflower, and Georgia. And then maybe a number seven. And then just keep thinking that and just keep thinking of positive things. Whoo, honey. Get your mind off the negative. Romans 4, 7 through 8. I am blessed, happy, and favored because my lawless deeds are forgiven and my sins have been covered up and completely buried. The Lord will take no account for nor charge my sin against me. So if you have sinned and you have said the salvation pro poem this morning, don't keep going back and keep thinking about what you did wrong. I might could be just as little as being ugly to somebody. I mean, I mean, that's not little, but like, a sin is a sin, and they're all sins. Just don't sin. And if you do sin, ask God for forgiveness. He will forgive you and move forward. Oh. We are jamming this morning. Oh, look at my shirt. Don't. Put on that makeup. We ain't going nowhere. It's from Muscadine Bloodline, Front Porch Angel. It's a sweet, sweet song. Y'all should look it up. But anyway, I know y'all are busy today. Y'all got a lot of things to do with your families, and as do I. We're going to go eat with my mom and my dad and my cousin Larry. Me, Georgia, Norma Jean, and Jay are headed over there shortly. This this song always gets you going. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we're gonna pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day, Lord. I thank you for this time that we have spent today, Lord, sharing your word and your gospel, Lord. And I thank you for allowing it to come from my heart, Lord, not my mind, Lord, because only you can give me the words that I need to say to touch someone else that may be needing to hear it this morning, Lord, and some things I needed to hear. So thank you, Lord, and I give you all the praise and all the glory. I pray as each person goes out today, they are safe and healthy and happy, and they're compassionate and loving, Lord, and that you that they know that you they are forgiven for their sins, Lord, if they ask you to forgive them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sins, Lord. I thank you, and I love you. I love you, God, and I love y'all, and I ask this in Jesus' name, I pray. One more thing, Lord. God, thank you for healing the land. Amen. Bye, y'all. Love y'all.